Hello everyone, welcome to the episode 39 of Solid Saturday. The guest we have today, Giuseppe, he is an experienced and goal-oriented leader with wide expertise in the management of artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning and data science projects for healthcare, B2C and military industries, Fortune 500 firms. So let's hear from his career journey, how did he find his passion or the interest in the data science field and managing to lead this area. So welcome, uh, Giuseppe, and uh, very happy to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Very glad to be here. So yeah, my career started uh, a few years ago. Um, and when I started, um, I mean, there was no real data science. Mm -hmm. I mean, this word was completely unknown. So I started uh, in uh, studying automation, robotics, mm -hmm. and related fields to AI because I was al always interested in AI. Mm -hmm. um, but the beginning of my professional career was more in consulting and um, computer science. Mm -hmm. I tried to focus always on uh, data intensive applications, so mm -hmm. data mining, data warehousing, but uh, clearly it was very different from now. I mean, nowadays uh, it's much easier to find data applications and uh, also customers that requires data science applications while uh, well, it was uh, quite difficult in that period. So it was a, a slow transition and yeah. I could uh, observe in this transition the explosion that happened once uh, there was uh, the, um, uh, the effect of the cheap hardware mm -hmm. and the possibility to access more complex hardware at, at a very cheap price and at the same time the development in, in, the, in the field of data science. Okay, okay. Thank you for sharing. And uh, as you already mentioned, actually, you know, uh, how did you transform or started your career journey within data science field? Uh, I would like to ask, like, you know, uh, what do you enjoy more about this field, like, you know, data science and AI? And what do you think that challenges you more in this field? Well, I think that uh, yeah, one of the things that more um, that most attract me are the challenges themselves, mm -hmm. because um, this field uh, is uh, is very intriguing for me. It was intriguing since the beginning. Mm -hmm. In particular, AI, um, data science um, is uh, a consequence for me uh, of my interest for AI, neuroscience, uh, cognitive psychology, and related processes. Mm -hmm. So. Um, now the challenges are all the open problems that still are present in uh, in data science, mm -hmm. in particular in the fields of uh, machine learning and deep learning. Um, I mean, one, one, one of the things that just to, 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 to make an example is um, the, the fact that right now we still need a large amount of data to train our, our models while animals in general can learn from very small amount of data. You don't need uh, a million uh, faces to learn how to distinguish a face. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, um, uh, there are diff many, many processes which in nature uh, seems much more efficient mm -hmm. than how we achieved. So all these challenges are clearly uh, extremely intriguing for me because uh, thanks to them, I imagine the future and I think also about the limitations and how is it's possible to overcome these limitations. I mean, if there are limitations, and on the other side, how it's possible um, to, to overcome these limitations, I think this will be um, a, a real quantic uh, jump, I would say. I mean, if we really understand this process, we okay. can move to a next level in, uh, in our evolution, because we can fully understand how the brain works, mm -hmm. which is uh, the final goal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are like more specialized towards the neuroscience also and I saw that in your profile. So uh, I will get back to that afterwards. But uh, when we are talking about the innovation in the data science, where do you think it is leading and you know, uh, which domains are on the major focus or concentrated as of now? Well, I see innovation in data science uh, spread um, among many domains. Um, it's like... Um, a process that is uh, very distributed. Um, I see, for example, uh, a lot of uh, single contributions mm -hmm. uh, that were then developed further 
to, to create more complex solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, in this moment, it's quite different than uh, a few years ago when uh, the single contribution was very difficult to become mm -hmm. widespread. Nowadays, a person can publish a new model and it can be very interesting and mm -hmm. other people can start working on it, improving it. So um, I think that innovation comes uh, from the bottom. Uh, of course, uh, there are sectors which are more um, uh, targeted by the innovation. Mm -hmm. I would say, for example, um, sectors like healthcare or mm -hmm. the technological sectors are extremely uh, interested in innovation because mm -hmm. um, they rely a lot on, uh, on, uh, on the results. In particular, my sector is healthcare, and for example, the um, uh, explainability of the systems. Uh, we, we are providing more and more complex systems, but we are losing explainability, which is a factor that is extremely crucial for the success of some models in the field. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, um, in many applications, uh, many many companies uh, uh, from uh, autonomous vehicles uh, to avionics uh, are, are looking for um, applications that can can be more efficient. Mm -hmm. And we ne we need also to consider another part of uh, of the process, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, all the applications that are okay, that we we can collect under the umbrella of the so called the AI for good. Mm -hmm. um, that is a very interesting field. There are many people working now to fight climate change, to help agriculture in countries where there are problems. So to use AI uh, and innovation in AI to solve problems in countries and regions that were always not considered attractive uh, for technology. Mm -hmm. And this is extremely interesting. I'm, I really like this thing and I, I try to, um, I mean, to, uh, to read all the posts and, um, when I, when I read some posts, to, uh, I try to get in touch with the people, uh, in this, uh, in these countries because these initiatives can really make the world be a better place, mm -hmm. in particular in all those countries where, uh, there are very big problems. And it's also creating a new class of uh, specialized workers mm -hmm. that can uh, find a better jobs, better futures. Mm -hmm. um, so there are different uh, situations that are all interconnected mm -hmm. uh, to the innovation. But I think that the origin of everything is the fact that um, thanks to the, the, the distribution of the free distribution of mm -hmm. everything, that the availability of papers um, and the free distribution of code, is uh, the key element uh, that allowed so many people to make experiments to create mm -hmm. new products, new software. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that sounds interesting. And uh, moving towards, uh, I saw you a lot of work towards like you know machine learning and deep learning. So just to make people understand that you know what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning, and where does neuroscience stand for these learnings? Well. Um, I would say deep learning is machine learning. I mean, machine learning is uh, the main container in this case, uh, is uh, everything about learning, mm -hmm. al uh, algorithms that are used to perform learning, uh, different kinds of learning, of course. Um, one of the, f the models, one of the initial models that were put into this set was uh, uh, the perception, which was the first neural network with a single layer. Uh, that was um, an initial proposal in the 50s. Um, it was immediately um, blocked, uh, not, not immediately. So after some time, some researchers showed that the model is just a linear one. Mm -hmm. And so they said it's uh, useless. Um, and this, this is an interesting story because thanks to this uh, opposition, there was the proposal of the multi-layer perception, mm -hmm. which changed completely the game. Mm -hmm. And it was the beginning of uh, what we call now deep learning, because uh, deep learning is mm, simply um, applying um, the model of neural networks to uh, to networks with many layers. Mm -hmm. And and of, of, of course, everything is strictly connected uh, to the functioning of our brain, at least uh, from an external viewpoint. Because uh, it's very difficult to say that we are reproducing a brain. I mean, if we look at the real neuron, um, 
and we compare with uh, an artificial one, the difference is enormous. But um, the idea, of, in particular, for example, for convolutional neural networks, which are one of the most intriguing things and uh, one of the first uh, proposals in the field to, to revolutionize this field, um, uh, is the, the fact that uh, some researchers noted that the functioning of the brain mm -hmm. uh, in the cortex of the brain is very similar as a sequence of layers mm -hmm. uh, in the cortex that crosses the images. Uh, in approximately the same way. So extracting uh, features which are in the beginning are coarser and then they become finer and finer. Mm -hmm. So it's something very similar. Clearly, uh, there are still, as I said before, open problems. I mean, um, we don't, mm, I mean, we, we rely to very large data sets mm -hmm. and the algorithms that we use uh, back propagation that was a revolution absolutely it mm -hmm. changed uh, the way uh, this model could be trained but it's uh, still very unlikely to be biologically plausible so on one side we have very powerful models but we know on the other side that there is a missing link that we need to find to connect the two words mm -hmm. yeah uh, thank you so much for sharing and moving towards our next question so uh, what is the role of data science strategy and how important it is within organization? Data science strategy, uh, as every strategy, is uh, essential, essential in every, every organization because we need to consider one thing. Uh, strategy uh, means uh, having a vision uh, mm -hmm. that is based on the current state, on the future state, and on the implications of the decisions that are made today. Mm -hmm. So. It's extremely important for a company that implements uh, any kind of data science, uh, let's say, approach in, into the company. They want to become data driven or they want to, uh, for example, to start projects mm -hmm. to think in a more strategic way. Uh, so starting understanding that some decisions made today can be, uh, can have effects tomorrow. Um, for example, um, I, I always repeat that nowadays we live in a world where if you are too late, in some cases you have no chances anymore because someone else will do what you could have done before. Mm -hmm. uh, some companies uh, wait, but they wait too much and then they discover that a startup made of two people already patented something that uh, they, they now have to buy. Mm -hmm. So uh, a strategy is um, essential in um, defining the way a company goes on. I, I, I just make an example considering the word where strategy is um, more, more, more common, is the word of war, and there are lots of books written about, um, about strategy. Um, for example, um, imagine that you conquer a land then, and then you have to patrol that land, mm -hmm. but you are wasting resources in doing this and you don't need to do this. So a strategist is a person that can immediately understand whether something makes sense considering the future implications in, and, and having a clear vision. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, nowadays, sometimes uh, there are, uh, when there are in particular, when you have money, you allocate money and then you discover that you have just costs because you are not spending in the proper way, um, in a strategic way. And you, you, and you don't find the, the use cases, let's say, for some, uh, for some, um, for some choices. Mm -hmm. So I always repeat that a company that, um, even a small one, that should start in this field should have a figure that must be responsible, empowered to be a strategist. So it can be an head of something, at the data science, whatever, but it must be empowered to look at the overall company and to think strategically in the present and in the future, considering that the pace that we have today has a certain frequency and tomorrow is probably higher and higher and higher. So it's impossible to, re to remain still for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, that definitely makes sense actually, having the vision can uh, give the proper direction to achieve towards, the, uh, like, you know, the, uh, beginning the journey towards that. So uh, thank you so much. And earlier, uh, as we discussed about the strategy, right? Uh, 
it always happens that sometimes we are clear about the vision sometimes we lack that vision or sometimes we have some limitations actually so how do you look into that challenge is actually when it comes to the building the strategy well it's necessary um, clearly it's necessary to understand uh, first of all the field having a clear understanding of the field mm -hmm. uh, a clear understanding of the field that means understanding uh, how this uh, how ai and uh, data driven uh, companies can work mm -hmm. and the implications of this the challenges are generally uh, i mean they have different natures but mm -hmm. for example there can be internal challenges which mm -hmm. are often uh, related to the fact that a company uh, with a culture um, mm -hmm. cannot easily be um, revolutionized because uh, a data driven company um, is often uh, uh, very different in terms of uh, um, a way of interacting a way to to to, to propose the uh, the decisions to make decisions uh, with respect to a company that is more gut feeling gut feeling based mm -hmm. so in some companies there are people who are now with a lot of experience and they don't accept the data as uh, more realistic more evident than their feelings so it's necessary uh, to be uh, also very uh, strategic in the way to be strategic, like say, uh, very diplomatic. It's necessary to introduce the changes in the right way, showing uh, the quality of the results, showing that the systems are, not, are never uh, substitutes mm -hmm. of human beings. Mm -hmm. This is another important thing because some resistance is, uh, all, sometimes comes from the fact that you are afraid that your role is replaced by some data. You say, a dashboard re can replace me. Um, this is false. And this is important, and a very important point, uh, to show how the system can help you in becoming more and more efficient. Mm -hmm. and, and so you can have better results, and this can turn into also better goals, uh, mm -hmm. better uh, income, whatever. So it's a sequence of steps. Mm -hmm. That, as I said before, requires clear vision of how AI-driven, AI data-driven company must work. And in particular, it's necessary to see the interconnections of departments and groups mm -hmm. and to see where, when, where there are more resistances and how it's possible to alleviate these resistances. Mm -hmm. um, just to, 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 to tell you, I always use uh, an expression, I say, there is only a language for us, and it's our stakeholder's language. Mm -hmm. If I talk to a stakeholder, mm -hmm. I always want to talk his language. Yeah. Because if I start uh, talking to a stakeholder saying, uh, um, AI can change completely the way you work, mm -hmm. um, can, can do something much better, uh, mm -hmm. normally the answer is, I don't need anything, it's fine. When mm -hmm. I need something, I look it for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the better way is to start understanding, talking to them without imposing anything, understanding the real needs and translating them into, uh, let's say, experimental applications that in, very, in, a, in a very large number of cases results in successes. And so at that point, you can see the stakeholders interested in mm -hmm. uh, more complex applications. Mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's great. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that is very valid point actually, as you mentioned that you need to talk uh, stakeholders language. You cannot talk to the business like in you, you know, the way Absolutely. you... Absolutely. So thank you so much for sharing and uh, moving towards your writing actually, you published almost seven books. Would you like to share more about with the audience? Yeah, um, I published... Um, yeah, approximately, considering the second editions also. Mm -hmm. I started publishing a book about machine learning algorithms. Mm -hmm. and there was also a second edition. And uh, then uh, I decided, together with the publisher, we decided to continue and creating a book about mastering machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal was um, to extend the first one. So mm -hmm. the first one is a little bit more basic. Um, but And the second one is uh, more advanced. And also for the second one, there are two editions. Mm -hmm. um, and I also brought uh, books about um, Enzone, 
um, machine learning in supervised learning or using scikit-learn. Um, in general, my approach is always, um, in this case, is always the same. I mean, I want to balance between theory and practice. Mm -hmm. um, I will never write a book only practical. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like books where there are just, uh, just there is just code. Mm -hmm. um, uh, on the other side, books with only theory can be very tough for many people. So I try to balance. I think that a data scientist must have a global knowledge. So mm -hmm. it must know the theory and it must know how to apply the theory. So in, uh, in all my examples, for example, I decided to put the code for each single topic mm -hmm. uh, using the most common frameworks or created from scratch. Mm -hmm. But I always put the right theory. Clearly, um, uh, th there's a, you can read at different levels, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I suggest the readers uh, when you read and you don't understand something, first mm -hmm. of all, you have a chance to stop. Nowadays, it's so easy, for example, to look on Wikipedia and you check uh, the meaning of an expression. You don't know uh, mm -hmm. what uh, uh, maximum likelihood estimation means. Okay, no problem. In that moment, is uh, is is discussed there, and probably uh, you, you should look in another part of the book for another uh, another explanation. But you can also uh, use Wikipedia, for example, to find an initial answer. And then you continue. It's a refinement process. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important that this process goes on and on because in this way, um, it, first of all, everything is simpler and simpler because you acquire more knowledge, but also you can become more autonomous in this field mm -hmm. and you can understand the reality behind the models um, and you can understand how that some models really work. Mm -hmm. Then at a certain point for some models, you can decide not to go too deeper uh, in, uh, in the explanation because maybe you don't need. But in the beginning in particular, I think it's a very important point uh, mm -hmm. for, for, for aspiring data scientists, the new data scientists, not to uh, discard this part. That's why I always put uh, I would say at fifty percent of theory and fifty percent of practical examples uh, in uh, in all my books. Okay, yeah, that's great. And moving towards the data management side, actually, you worked as a data manager. So, what were your roles and responsibilities as a data manager? Yeah, I was a data manager um, um, in different contexts. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now I am a head of uh, innovative data science. Uh, um, it's a little bit different, but the role more or less is the same. I mean, mm -hmm. it's managing uh, teams of people working with data. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in when I started, uh, the the amount of data and the complexity was very different from mm -hmm. now. Uh, my main responsibility uh, was in that case, uh, for example, to find. Uh, Right use cases mm -hmm. and to to find um, to 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 help the team in um, showcasing the results. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, it was uh, more difficult because uh, we needed to find customers, for example, and, and so it was also very interesting work to interact with customers, collecting requirements from the customers, and transforming the requirements into proposals. Uh, now is um, a completely different situation because uh, we have so many requests. Mm -hmm. So my role is more um, like a dispatcher, um, mm -hmm. and I would say also to create a strategy inside the team to uh, to let the team grow and to uh, to expand our knowledge as a team and to understand how we can help the company and we can produce value. So it's an investigation process in many cases. Uh, it's necessary to uh, discuss with the people, discuss also with different people, mm -hmm. proposing uh, to show the results and finding uh, new possibilities to uh, interact in, in uh, different fields uh, to, to produce new, new, new value for the company. So you being a manager for a long time actually, so what are the important aspects uh for managing the team? Well, there are many fundamental aspects. Mm -hmm. I um, consider, first of all, that um, 
managing a team is not uh, a privilege. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's a role uh, that sometimes uh, you feel the responsibility, mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, I mean it, it's 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 heavy, but. The most important thing is understanding, first of all, that you have a team, not just a set of people. Yeah. And creating the culture of a team and not the culture of a set of people mm -hmm. is uh, extremely important. I know about uh, teams which are people who, are, who work in a way that is completely disconnected. Mm -hmm. um, I try to avoid this. I try to create the culture of a mm -hmm. team and then I try um, to let the team grow, so to let everybody um, evolve into the team. So uh, having a clear communication with the team about the choices, I discuss with everybody. Uh, everybody knows that um, they can discuss with me about everything in every moment. Um, so uh, also in the, de the decisions are communicated uh, in a clear way. And I try to delegate. One thing that is extremely important, in my opinion, is delegation. I want to uh, the, the people to become very um, responsible since they, they start. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have people starting uh, almost uh, after graduation, and they are already empowered uh, with some projects. This is extremely important uh, because uh, if you can start um, helping the people when they when it's necessary, but giving them the chance to, um, to 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 interact with other stakeholders, to interact with other people, to to have the a, a responsibility. This is the best way to accelerate their career path and to create a real team where they don't feel to be just cops, but like you know uh, that they have to process to do something. Mm -hmm. um, but they feel to be autonomous. I sometimes I say you, you can make the decision. If you want, you can ask me. But in this case, I, it's up to you. I leave the decision to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it happened, that, for example, that there were some mistakes. And they said, oh, uh, there was a mistake. I told you. I said, okay, it's fine. Uh, everybody makes mistakes. Let's, let's discuss. Let's understand. Mm -hmm. I have an experience, just like everybody. Mm -hmm. And I can try to give you my experience, but it's absolutely normal. Uh, so this is, I think, um, a good way to avoid that the team uh, mm -hmm. becomes stagnant. Uh, I mean, uh, a team uh, uh, starts to be incoherent. So I want the team to feel uh, coherent. And at the same time, they have to understand that a manager, uh, a leader, and you know, this is an, another important thing for me, a leader is the, the face whenever it's necessary to take shame. Mm. And it's always behind the curtain when it's necessary to show the value. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't like people that uh, send their, uh, their employees to take, uh, I mean, to, 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 to be... Uh, yeah, I understood. So it is the more. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was there for your team, kind of. Thick, yeah. Yep, yeah. and uh, that definitely makes sense, and they, it shows that you know you are you are a true leader. Uh, but before we come towards the leadership style, actually, I would like to cover one more question. Uh, do you have any favorite machine learning algorithm, and why, or and any programming language that you always prefer? I don't have any particular um, preference because, uh, I mean, it's necessary to have a global vision. Um, I don't start with um, a specific choice every time. But if I have to make a choice to about something that I like more, for example, I really love uh, reinforcement learning in general, mm -hmm. the field of reinforcement learning, because I consider this um, uh, as the, the way animals learn, human beings learn. And I think it's a field that um, has less applications now than other, uh, other ways of learning, but it offers uh, a lot of opportunities uh, for creating more uh, natural artificial systems. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of languages, um, well, um, it's, um, um, I mean, I have personal choices, 
but I I try to be flexible with the people in general. Uh, personally, uh, I think that Python uh, has created an ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, that now has uh, the advantage to be a real ecosystem. So uh, there are so many different packages, libraries uh, that can allow features, uh, um, allow to, to, to obtain results uh, in different uh, scenarios from web applications to machine learning, deep learning and whatever else. Uh, but it's not so easy to do with uh, other environments like R, for example, or uh, Julia that are emerging or but sometimes are not the best choice. But in general, for example, um, we we use uh, different uh, packages, different uh, different environments, different languages, because, for example, R has the advantage to have a lot of... Uh, um, libraries uh, written over time for statistical learning that are not available in Python. Uh, so in some cases, uh, uh, some algorithms are easy to find uh, in R and not easy to find in Python. Um, so uh, in my opinion, the goal is not to, to be bound to a specific mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. um, I chose uh, to be uh, more Python oriented, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm not bound. Uh, um, if if it's necessary, I, I switch to yeah. other technologies. Yeah, that's great actually. And uh, moving towards the leadership side, actually, you you highlighted a couple of things uh, being a leader. But what is your leadership style, if you have to describe, and any specific leader that you always admire or follow? Well, I follow many leaders. Uh, um, I never had the chance to be under them so i the experience is always indirect for example i really loved uh, the principles by ray dalio um, even if i read uh, about people complaining about this approach which is which can be very tough uh, on on one side is um, is a very powerful approach on the other side can be a very particular one uh, because uh, it's a very open approach but some people don't like to to, uh, to have open uh, um, confrontation with other people, so saying uh, uh, in, to the face, uh, I mean, I don't like what you did, um, uh, how they did, th th this thing is, is, is promoted. Um, but um, my, my style, as I said before, is um, to try to, to, to avoid a, a neat separation between leadership and employees. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, to be always uh, together with them and to empower them as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. This is also uh, something that uh, Ray Dalio says, uh, because when uh, you, you are empowered as mm -hmm. soon as possible, uh, you start thinking in a different way. First of all, because you understand that your company trusts you, mm -hmm. your company, your boss, and mm -hmm. then you can also start learning making mistakes because uh, everybody makes mistakes and mistakes are necessary if mm -hmm. we if we don't make mistakes or if we, or if the mistakes are hidden every time uh, we never understand how to improve some 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 processes so for example i had a discussion um, with that person saying i i met that colleague uh, we had a fight because of this and we can discuss uh, probably okay. it's about, about rephrasing some words, um, um, changing the way we interact, understanding uh, the criticalities uh, on a field. So I would like to be more like this kind of leader than someone that says uh, what to do only. Yeah. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, it's also necessary to, to have uh, a strategic view, so also to decide the priorities and to uh, yeah. communicate yeah. them. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing and moving towards the guidance any books i know that you have already have a couple of books but, uh, or online courses apart from that you would like to recommend to the audience well um there are many books um, um for books uh, uh, i mean I, I would recommend a lot of books um so i don't know how many people can afford to buy 100 books uh, because uh, if, if we want to have a global vision, we should really buy uh, tons of books. Um, I would suggest, for example, the, um, the books by Judy Uppers uh, about uh, causality because it's one of the um, most important authors 
uh, in his field and is most unique. Um, uh, I don't want to recommend any specific uh, data science book uh, because there are so many. Um, for example, uh, I mean, there is the, the Bible, Deep Learning by good fellow Benjo um, Harbill that is clearly an extreme interesting extremely interesting book, but the reader must know that that book relies on heavy mathematics. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, I mean, I think that uh, it's easier for the people to check the reviews, to check the previews in the books and make a decision. For the courses instead, I try, in general, I don't want to advertise any particular, but I try to um, promote courses, uh, for example, in platforms that are baked by universities mm -hmm. uh, like Coursera or edX. Uh, these platforms, um, in my opinion, have the advantage that mm -hmm. behind each course there is uh, a serious institution with mm -hmm. serious people that guarantee uh, not just to propose uh, a quick introduction or something to get money, but they offer a, a real path. Uh, so when you get the certification, the certification has a real value. I, I wrote about this. Uh, it's, uh, sometimes these courses have exercises, have uh, uh, moments where you, have, you remain stuck, mm -hmm. but it's very important because what you are doing is, uh, um, uh, uh, is creating value. So I if the thing has no value, probably you can obtain this in, uh, in two days, but you can expect this to resell this as a, a value, valuable thing. So I always recommend courses uh, baked by important universities. And now this is a great advantage that everybody has uh, because these courses are really available to anybody uh, at a very low price. Wow. So thank you so much for sharing. And definitely I think audience is going to find it useful as well. And moving towards to end this podcast, uh, I would like to ask the last question, which is about tips and advice for the people or the students or professionals who are looking to pursue their career in the data field or new professionals who are trying to grow in their profession in this field or looking to transform into this field. Well, the suggestion is different according to the profile. For aspiring, I would say, first of all, understanding if um, they really like data science. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, the fact that data science is very common, uh, is very diffused, doesn't mean that it's the, the best choice for everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's helpful that everybody can really evaluate what uh, can create passion. Mm -hmm. um, some people uh, will discover this later and sometimes they start some internship and then uh, they are fired and uh, they complain about this but they discover during that period that they are not really interested. Um, so evaluating, thinking that what you, I mean, the, 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 the beautiful thing is the beautiful thing for you, mm -hmm. not, not the, the one that everybody says is the, the, the most beautiful thing. I can, if uh, uh, the, the sexiest job in the world is not the sexiest, sexiest sorry, job for you, um, it's not a problem. There are so many other uh, mm -hmm. possibilities. Um, for um, new data scientists, mm -hmm. I suggest, uh, my, my suggestion is to go on to resist in the moments of, um, uh, of, sometimes frustration because uh, there are so many boring activities. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, some activities are, are not uh, really fascinating as they imagined. Um, to use their time to expand their boundaries, mm -hmm. to study more and to, to, to try to, uh, to, 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 to also to find new ways to solve the problems in a more uh, um, interesting way. Mm -hmm. um, and for professionals, uh, instead, uh, well, in that case, uh, it's a choice that requires a, 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 a step. It, it's like, um, I mean, it, it's, it's like for new data scientists, it's not very different. In my opinion, in that case, the, the real problem is the, that some, in some cases, they are considered already established. So somebody can think, uh, why I, do you want to change now after 15 years of experience, for example? Um, in that case, it's, it's about your, also your will. So study a lot, be prepared, 
start working, except also uh, to, to, to go back. Because uh, when you change completely your, your work, you mm -hmm. cannot expect to have the same consideration that you had previously. So, for example, there are managers who decided to go uh, in, in this field and mm -hmm. they started as uh, uh, normal data scientists. But after one year, two years, they became uh, leaders and, and so forth. So it's also necessary to understand that in, uh, when this kind of step is done, mm -hmm. there is a price to pay. Um, but if you, if you really like this, if you think that this is a, a game changer for you, if you feel realized, don't worry, it's not a problem. Uh, there is always time. So go on and start this journey yeah. without uh, any, f any fear. Yes. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed talking to you. So thank you so much for all your time and cooperation. And uh, hope uh, we will again interact. So audience, uh, I hope you will find this episode useful as well because we discussed a lot of things related to the machine learning, data science and AI. And as I always say, until we meet happy leading, let's lead together. Stay safe. Bye for now.